Hello everyone and welcome to Agile Rank Mate. Today we will be dealing with the VIT Triple E examination and we will be dealing with the segment mental ability or aptitude. Let's begin then with the first question. If the first three letters in the word comprehension are reversed, then the last three letters are added and the remaining letters are reversed and added, then which letter will be exactly in the middle? A, S, B, R, C, H, or D, N. So, let's write the word first and then do according to the question. So, comprehension. First, they say to, if the first three letters in the word are reversed. So, let's take the first three letters that are C, O and M and then reverse it. We'll get M, O, C. Then, they say to add the last three letters. The last three letters are added. Last three letters are I, O and N. Without any change, we are putting it directly into the new uh, let's say a phrase then we have uh, the question says the remaining letters are reversed and then added so first uh, let's reverse the remaining letters we we'll get s n e h e r p and then we'll add it directly into this phrase we'll get s n e h e -R -P. R P. So, the question is asking which letter will be exactly in the middle. So, if we cut M and P, O and R, C and E, I and H, O, E and N, we'll get S as exact middle of this phrase. So, option A, S will be the correct answer for this question. Next. In three colored boxes, red, green, and blue, 108 balls are placed. There are twice as many balls in the green and red boxes combined as there are in the blue box, and twice as many in the blue box as there are in the red box. How many balls are there in the green box? A18, B36, C45, or D, none of these. So, let's represent uh, the three boxes, the, bo the balls in each three boxes by R, G and B. Then with the first sentence we can say that R plus G plus B is equal to 108. Then the next sentence says there are twice as many balls in the green and red boxes combined as there are in the blue box. Now what does this mean? Does it mean that 2 times G plus R is equal to B? No, this is not correct. What they are saying is 2 times B is equal to G plus R. R plus G. Because there are twice as many in the green and red boxes as there are in the blue box. So, uh, the green and red boxes combined will have more than in a singular blue box, blue box, and they are equal when it's 2. So 2b is equal to r plus g. So let's take this as the first statement and this as the second statement. And then we have, there are twice as many in the blue box as there are in the red box. So similarly, we cannot write 2b is equal to r. This would be wrong. We will have to write 2r is equal to b which will be statement number 3. Now, we have R, that is the number of red balls, I mean uh, B, the number of balls in the blue box in terms of R as 2R. Now, let's put this value of B into the second equation. Then, we'll get 2 times 2R is equal to R plus G, which is equal to 4R. Then, we can isolate the terms with R, we get G is equal to 4R minus R, which is equal to 3R. Now, 
uh, we have r in the terms of r, which is basically r, g in the terms of r, which we found out is 3r, and b in the terms of r, which is 2r. So let's put all of these values in equation number 1. We will get r plus g is equal to 3r, so 3r plus b is equal to 2r. The whole of this added would be 108. So 6r is equal to 108. Then we will get r is equal to 18. So the number of balls in the red box would be 18. But they are asking how many balls are there in the green box. Now we know that uh, g is equal to 3r. So the number of balls in the green box will be 3 times r, which will be 3 times 18, which will be equal to 54. So we get that there are 54 balls in the green box. Let's check the options. Option A says 18, which is incorrect. Option B says 36, which is also incorrect. Option C says 45, which is also incorrect. So from this, we can say that option D, none of these would be the correct answer for this question. Next question. Eight friends, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, are sitting in a circle facing the center. B is sitting between G and D. H is third to the left of B and second to the right of A. C is sitting in between A and G and B and E are not sitting opposite to each other. Which of the following statements is not correct? A. B and A are sitting opposite to each other. B. C is third to the right of D. C. E is sitting between F and D. Or D. A is sitting between C and F. Now, let's draw the diagram for this question. Now, the order in which we start doesn't matter because it's a circle. However, if it was a queue or a line, we would have needed to take the order of each of the persons. Now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 friends. It's already given the question, my bad. So, we'll have to draw 8 spots in the table. Let's say they are equally distanced. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these, let these be the 8 spots. Now the first one, first statement says B is sitting between G and D. So let B be over here. Then G could be over here or D could be over here or D could be over here or G could be over here. Let's leave it like that. And the second statement says, H is third to the left of B. Now, we know B is facing to the center, as given in the question. All of them are facing the center. Now, it is given that H is third to the left of B. So, in consideration with B, H is third to the left. Now, B's left is our right in this direction. So, this is first to the left of B, second to the left of B, so H must be over here, which is third to the left of B. And then the statement continues, second to the right of A. Now this statement is talking about H and not B. So H is second to the right of A. Now this statement can be rewritten as A is second to the left of H. Now this will be easier because we know where H is and from there we can find out which is second to the left. Now H is facing towards the center and his left is about the same as our left. So second to the left will be first to the left and this would be second to the left. So A would be second to the left of H. So B, H and A are fixed. Next we have C is sitting in between A and G. So from this we can conclude that C is adjacent to both A and G. Let's take A. So if C is adjacent to A, C could either be over here or C could either be over here. Let's say this is where C is. Then 
D must be over here, given that C is sitting, bet sitting between A and D. However, this is not possible because H already occupies that spot. So C cannot be over here. So C must be over here as there is no other option. And from this, we can say that G is also over here. And with this, we saw that G, if G is over here, D must be over here from the initial statement. So we got A, B, C, D, H and G. Let's look at the next statement. B and E are not sitting opposite to each other. Now, which is the opposite of B? It is this position, which is currently empty. So, the saying that E cannot be in this position. And the only remaining spot for E is this one. So, E would be over here. And the only remaining friend left is F. So, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. All of the friends are sitting in the table. Now, we have to check the question which says which of the following statements is not correct. I have to check which is the false statement. Now, let's look at uh, statement A. D and A are sitting opposite to each other. If we check D and if we check A, we can conclude that they indeed are sitting opposite to each other. This means that this statement is true which means option A is false which, because we are checking for statement which is not correct. Now, second statement says C is third to the right of D. Now, D is facing towards the center and his right would be approximately our left. So, first to the right of D, second to the right of D and third to the right of D. Third to the right of D is indeed C. So, option B our statement B is true, which means option B is incorrect. Now let's look at option C. E is sitting between F and D. Now we have E over here. And the people besides him are D, which is given, and H, not F. So we can say that this statement is false, making this the true option. I mean the correct option. However, let's also check D. D says A is sitting between C and F. If we check A is over here, besides him there is C and besides him there is F. So A is indeed sitting between C and F, which means this statement is true, which makes the option wrong. So option C is the correct answer for this question. Next question. In a class, 3 by 5 of the students are girls and the rest are boys. If 2 by 9 of the girls and 1 by 4 of the boys are absent, what part of the total number of students is present? 17 by 25, 18 by 49, 23 by 30 or 23 by 36. Now, let's consider the total number of students as 1 for simplicity of calculations. Of course, it cannot be 1 because they are giving fractions, but let us assume the sample space or the sample number of students is equal to 1. So, it says 3 by 5th of the students are girls. So, 3 by 5 is equal to girls. From this, we will get 2 by 5 is equal to boys, given the rest are boys. Now, if 2 by 9 of the girls and 1 by 4 of the boys are absent, so, the number of people who are absent 2 by 9 of the girls means 2 by 9 of 3 by 5th of the whole class since girls consist of 3 by 5th of the whole class and adding it with 1 by 4 of the boys 1 by 4 of the number of boys occupy 2 by 5th of the whole class so of 2 by 5 now of basically means multiplication which will be rewritten as 2 by 9 into 3 by 5 plus 1 by 4 into 2 by 5. So, cancelling out, we have 3, 1, 2, 1. Which will be 2 by 3 into 5, 15, plus 1 by 2 into 5, 10. The LCM of 15 and 10 would be 30. So, we will get 2 into 2, 4 by 30, plus 1 into 3, 3 by 30, which is 7 by 30. So, 7 by 30 students are 
absent. Now the question is asking what part of the total number of students is present. So present would be the total number minus the number of absents. We assume the total number to be 1 and the absent which we got now as 7 by 30. So this will be 30 minus 7 by 30 which would be equal to 23 by 30. This means 23 by 30 of the total number of students is present. So we have option C 23 by 30 as the correct option. Last question. Here in this table, we have to find out which number replaces the question mark by finding a relation between the numbers. So, immediately we can say that the relation can either be in the downwards or the vertical, this is downwards or upwards, or it can be horizontally, which is right or left. So, if we check downwards, we can see that 19 17, 9 for the first column, 3, 11 and 5 for the second column. However, this does not seem to have a specific pattern because this will be minus 2 and then there is no specific way of getting to 9 unless we do minus 8. However, this pattern is not followed over here because 3 minus 2 is not 11, it is 1. So this, there is no pattern which can be found out during downwards or upwards. Now let's check horizontally. That is starting from the left. 19, 3, 25. So 19 plus 3 is not 25. However, 19 plus 3 plus 3, adding 3 again, will get 25. Because 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 19 would be 25. Now let's check this relation for the next row. We get 17 plus 11 plus 3, if you check, would not be equal to 39. However, if we put plus 11, we'll get 17 plus 22, which is indeed equal to 39. So here we added 3 2 times, and here we added 11 2 times. Basically what we're doing is adding 19 2 plus 2 into 3 and here we get 17 plus 2 into 11. Following the same pattern, we can find what number will be in the question mark. So, the first number is 9, we write it as, by, as it is and then we have 5. So, since 3 is multiplied by 2, 11 is multiplied by 2, so will be 5. So, 9 plus 5 into 2. So, 5 into 2 will become 10, 10 plus 9 you will get 19. So option A, 19 is the correct answer for this question. And that's all folks for this video. We hope you found this interesting. For more of such videos on competitive exams, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel Agile Rank Mate. Until the next episode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.